Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm meeting you after so so long after my entire process of settling down in college and getting used to the city. So I decided on making a video. I was looking for a few ideas. I thought it'll be nice to share with you how I started studying or in fact how I study especially for my MBBS syllabus. So it's a vast subject and it's important that you have a great base for whatever you're studying, be it MBBS, be it school, be it college, anything. So I thought it'd be a good idea to show you guys how you're supposed to read in order to master a concept through a book or through any online source. And all you need for this is a source of education that is a book or an ebook maybe. You need patience and you just need an internet connection. So come along with me and let us read a small topic from the chapter which is subcellular organelles and cell membranes. So in this, let us read about mitochondria. Not me, the actual powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> mitochondria. They are spherical, oval or rod-like bodies about 0.1 to 1 micron in diameter and about 7 microns in length. There isn't much that you can figure out from this one line. All you get to know is about the shape of mitochondria and that its length is greater than its width. Next line is erythrocytes do not contain mitochondria. Number one, you have to underline each and every word that you do not understand in a sentence. For example, I understand what every word means here, but you might not know what an erythrocyte is. So you search up on Google and you find out that an erythrocyte is a red blood cell or an RTC. Now the second question that should arise in your mind is why don't erythrocytes contain mitochondria? And when you question why, you search that up too. Usually the answer for such questions are present in the next line or in the next paragraph, but if they're not, it's important that you make a small note about it in the side or somewhere around the book. Or if you like to make notes separately, then do so. So erythrocytes do not contain mitochondria because they need space to carry oxygen because you know that the main function of erythrocytes is to carry oxygen and since mitochondria use up the oxygen to produce ATP, erythrocytes do not contain mitochondria because they undergo a process known as mitophagy. Now this process name is written in the next line and you have to underline this name and now you know why this process occurs and you know the reason behind why erythrocytes do not contain mitochondria. The next line says, the tail of spermatozoa is fully packed with mitochondria. Now you have to ask another question. Why? Why do spermatozoa need so many mitochondria? And when you search up this, you realize that spermatozoa need to move. That is, they have to be extremely motile and for that, they require the energy that is produced by mitochondria. Moving on to the next sentence. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell where energy released from oxidation of foodstuffs is trapped as chemical energy in the form of ATP. Metabolic functions of mitochondria are shown in table 2.2. So, out of this entire thing, probably the only thing that you're going to take away is mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But why? Why is it the powerhouse of the cell? Obviously because it produces power and this power is produced in the form of ATP. Do you want to know what the process is? Then just go back to wherever you think this process will be given and read that part as a division. And I know that most of my audience are students of 11th and 12th. So obviously you're going to go back to respiration chapter and find out how exactly mitochondria produces energy. And now the second thing that we have to look at in this paragraph is they asked you to look at some table which is table 2.2 and if you skip these kind of things you are left behind. Trust me this one percent of reading through the lines will help you know better than everyone in your peer group. So we go to table 2.2 and we see mitochondria's functions and you can see that there are about almost 10 things written here about the synthesis of ketone bodies or urea or heme or even ATP generation etc. So you might not know the meaning of so many words in whatever is given here. So what you have to do is search up these words, take a small sticky note 
and write the meaning of all these words and just stick it on the same page. Because when you come back to revise, then you will know what it means. Or even if you come across this word in some other chapter, you will know what it means. And that is very, very important. It gives you an upper hand on almost everyone. Now, let's move on to the next sentence. Mitochondria have two membranes. The inner membrane folds into cristae. Mitochondria, the only thing you're taking away from here is mitochondria is double membrane layer. And the inner membrane folds into cristae. Now you're like, what are cristae? So now, since they're talking about the structure of mitochondria, your eyes should automatically go towards the diagram. They have given a diagram here. They have clearly demarcated what an inner membrane is. And if you see the inner membrane, you can see that they're folded into cristae. And these cristae are basically the foldings. The inner mitochondrial membrane contains the enzymes of electron transport, electron transport chain. Again, the same thing. If you don't know what an ETC is, then search up on what an ETC is. The fluid matrix contains the enzymes of citric acid cycle, urea cycle, and heme synthesis. Now, fluid matrix is only given in the diagram. They haven't mentioned what it is anywhere before this paragraph. And that is why looking at the diagram is important. So this fluid matrix is filled inside the inner layer and they say that it has the enzymes for these particular cycles. You obviously have to know what these cycles are, at least one function of those cycles, etc. Then they talk about cytochrome P50. Then they talk about cytochrome P450 system present in mitochondrial inner membrane is involved in steroidogenesis. Steroidogenesis, break up the word genesis or generation of steroids. Very easy. You just have to remember that one word that is cytochrome P450. So underline that word or highlight that word. Superoxide dimutase is present in cytosol of mitochondria. They've just given this. You don't know what a superoxide dimutase is. But through the sentence, you just find out it's probably an enzyme. And if you read the sentence carefully, you can also realize that it's not only there in the mitochondria, but it's also present in the cytoplasm. So that is one thing that you can note down. And if you don't know what that enzyme does, then just search it up. And I searched it up. I found out that it adds hydrogen ions to oxygen to form hydrogen peroxide. So I just wrote it down for extra information. Now, I've read this entire paragraph. What I do usually is, after reading a paragraph, I go through it and find out what kind of questions can come from it. So I'm not a person who looks at question banks or the uh, back or the back of the chapter questions. I make my own questions because questions can come from anywhere. So when I read this paragraph, I clearly realized that they're talking about the functions of mitochondria. So each and every line is one function. You just have to demarcate those functions, make brackets and write those functions down either in a separate notebook or just write point one, two, three, four here so that it becomes clear for you. And in the exam, you just have this visual memory of these points one, two, three, four that you've written in your book. Mitochondria also contains specific DNA. The integral inner membrane proteins are made by mitochondrial protein synthesizing machinery. So. From this line, we realize that mitochondria has a separate DNA of itself, which is different from the cellular DNA. The integral proteins of the inner membrane of mitochondria, so the inner membrane of mitochondria has certain proteins, and these proteins are synthesized by the commands of mitochondrial DNA and not the commands of the cellular DNA. So you have to read the line slowly and try to grasp each and everything you can. If you don't understand, just ask your teacher. That's the bare minimum you have to do. However, the majority of proteins, especially of outer membrane, are synthesized under the control of cellular DNA. This is pretty self-explanatory if you understood the first line. The division of mitochondria is under the command of mitochondrial DNA. So. Mitochondrial cell division completely depends on the DNA present in mitochondria. That's all you have to take away from this. Mitochondrial ribosomes are different from cellular ribosomes. This again is pretty self-explanatory. And if you see this entire paragraph, you realize that there's simple sentences that you just have to keep in mind. Just in case, if you have to apply this sometime, somewhere, then you might require this information. If someone asks you, how does mitochondria replicate? 
then you have to be in a position to tell them that it uses its own DNA machinery and not the cellular DNA machinery. You have to make questions out of each and every paragraph that you read. And this might seem too extra or just too much work at this point, but then when you're first reading the re but, but when you're first reading the chapter and you read it and you read it in this way, it stays in your mind. That means whenever you revise it, even if it's months later, you will remember all of this. It won't be a huge task because now you have mastered this entire paragraph. You have mastered this entire topic. And this will not only help you in this chapter, but all the things that you've learned in this particular chapter are going to help you not only in this particular subject, but in every other subject that is related to it. So this was it for today's video. I'm going to summarize by telling you guys to go through each and every line, understand each and every word that you're reading. If you don't understand, do not hesitate to just search it up. And when you read this way, it reduces the amount of efforts you have to put to study for exams by leaps and leaps. So try your best. I know it's really annoying to study this way, but then the amount of self-satisfaction it gives you is great. So like try your best to study in this way. Try your best to study each and every subject in this way. I know there are a few subjects where you just have to mug up, but you know, it's not always mugging up. There's obviously some or the other concept that is linked to every line that you read. So this is how you master concepts and this is how you master the subject that you are reading. So, well, uh, I'm done. This is just a informal end of the video session. I'm recording in my hostel room for the first time. It feels nice. I just came from college. I'm super tired. I don't know. We had classes still late today and then they gave us the vaccine also today. And then I just crashed and then i'm like i need to shoot a youtube video because it's getting too late uh but yes the study pressure is intense we're sitting in library right from four to eight every day at least i am and my friend also and this is just the beginning kind of scary but yes i will try to post as frequently as i can at least once a week so yes thank you so much for still keeping up with my channel and thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys later